It's not justice. It's punish. <laughs> That's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, Jeremy here with a review for the second season of The Punisher. Now, I know I'm a little bit late to this, but to be honest, I actually stopped watching it. I did start it when it was released, but I got to about the third episode and I couldn't watch anymore. I actually had to take a little bit of a break. It was when my brother had finished it, he said it gets a little bit better. I continued watching it, and obviously all of the Netflix Marvel shows have suffered from pacing filler issues, and season two of The Punisher is no exception. It has a entire storyline that is basically filler. When it comes to comparing it to the first season, the first season is clearly far better structured in terms of its narrative, its characters, and its arcs. The second season was made in record time. I think Stephen Lightfoot had barely a year to make a second season, which is obviously very different from the other shows which had years, sometimes almost three years, to work on their next season. This one has a very weak story, unfortunately. There are two narratives happening. One with Billy Russo coming back as a anarchist sort of chaos version of Jigsaw. Rather than a criminal element, he is just an agent of chaos and greed. Whereas the actual main story, or at least what's what they try to tell you, is this: there's this girl who is part of a blackmailing ring and she gets caught up in something way above her head and Frank just so happens to be there, kills the bad guys, and then it forgets itself. This storyline with this girl is horrible. I'll straight up say it's horrible. It is so unoriginal. It is so boring. It actually, in fact, is so unimportant to the show that they will go with this storyline till about the fifth episode and then they drop it almost entirely. And it doesn't really come back into meaning until the second last episode of the season. There's way too many episodes. Honestly, you could put this whole season into eight episodes and there would be no difference in terms of actual importance of what you see. John Barenthal's good. He's good as Frank Castle, but he's still not the fully realized Frank Castle. The most Punisher-esque sort of performance in terms of motivations, in terms of character psychology was what he was in the second season of Daredevil. However, in the first season of The Punisher, he's more of this moral guy who's totally willing to kill people, but he's got guilt on his conscience. And if you know who that is, it's because it's the Wolverine. He basically is the Wolverine with guns. The Punisher has no guilt about what he's doing. He has no compassion towards these criminals, and he has no regrets when it comes to murdering gangsters by the dozen. And we never really saw that in this show. And John Barenthal is limited to what he can do because he's not playing the character that he set out to be. He's not playing this morally empty sociopath. He is playing a guy who is meant to try and have these feelings, but he's trying not to. And it leads to him just being like, rah, 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 oh, God damn it. Rah, 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 rah. He mumbles a lot in this season. Then there's this girl. This girl is terrible. She kind of gets a little bit more bearable later on, but she's horrible when she's first introduced. There's supposed to be this stupid connection between her and... Frank, but you don't get it. You get one scene where he teaches her how to disarm a person, and that's it. That's the only connection I would say they have. Billy actually is a cool character in this. I, the amnesia thing is kind of bullshit, but they work it well because there's a psychiatrist character, and the moral and psychological and just the ideological, uh, the ideologies between these two characters are pretty cool and how they mix it in with Frank is kind of interesting. Obviously the Punisher is known for gunfights and violence and action. There are three good fight scenes in this whole season. The first one is in the first episode in the bar, the second one is with these Russian guys in a gym, and the third one is in the tenth episode. There are some very boring gunfights in this. There's one point where they have this standoff at a police station in Ohio and I think in the third episode it's the most boring gunfight I've ever seen they have one that's in the middle of the street at one point extremely boring gunfight 
I was very surprised at how boring the gun action was in this in comparison to the first season which had so much more production value put into it. Again, when you don't have a lot of time to create something like this, you can't go for that visual spectacle. So unfortunately, this whole season suffers from not enough time to make it, way too much goddamn filler, and a possible knowledge of the overhanging doom of this show. I full on regret putting my time into watching this because I will not remember any of it. It was very unoriginal, it was very boring for a large portion of it. It did not, it does not stand to be 13 episodes. And it unfortunately is a very negative note for this show to go out on. So in the end I'm gonna give The Punisher Season 2 a 2 out of 7. Honestly, guys, I did not enjoy it. I I was very bored. I saw a bunch of people talking about how this was a somewhat better season than the first. Yeah, I'll admit that the first season was kind of unoriginal too, but holy shit, at least it was entertaining. This was boring. Anyways, guys, hope you liked this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, that's all for me. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <sniffs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.